So why is Ben calling it off with JLo? We've got all the possible reasons why this couple is on the outs. So if you didn't know, it's been kind of big in the news, Jennifer recently launched her album and a lot of other things. This is me now. This was like a self-financed $20 million multimedia campaign. And then she also launched the big film, This Is Me Now, A Love Story. You sense this? Yeah, it's about the rekindling of the romance with Ben. No pressure. And then you've also got the documentary, The Greatest Love Story Never Told. Well, until it was told. What was it about? The making of the record and the film. There was also supposed to be a tour, but ooh. So when Ben popped up in the documentary, it was to express concern because he didn't want his private love story being used for something he didn't want. Turns out the documentary was named after a scrapbook that he gifted Jennifer for Christmas in 2021, and it had every letter and email they'd written to each other over the last 20 years. I can see why he wanted that private. Jennifer was like, oh no. She showed the book to her producers and songwriters on the first day of making this album, without asking or telling Ben. She's like, it was our bible, we just left it in the studio. This precious thing filled with 20 years of memories that somebody else wanted private. Yeah, this is all mentioned within the first five minutes of the documentary, and right out of the gate, Ben is not shy about his discomfort. He is shocked that Jennifer would share something so personal with her collaborators, and now with the world. Yes, art does come from making something personal, but when you're making somebody else intentionally uncomfortable with your art, and kind of violating consent, it's not a good move. So JLo did recently announce that she was cancelling the tour attached to this whole media run, and that's yet another red flag pointing to a divorce. So while rumors about this relationship have continued to circulate on social media, a source close to JLo set the record straight about one item making news, the couple quietly selling their $61 million Beverly Hills mansion. This property has like 12 bedrooms, 24 washrooms, a 12 car garage, sports complex, I could go on and on and on. Thank you Wall Street Journal for all that information. So this place, which the couple moved into about a year ago now, apparently just isn't the right long term fit for either of them. This is once again from that source. Apparently Ben never liked the house. It's too far away from his kids. Whereas JLo was like, oh it's too big for her. It's too big for the diva. Okie dokie, once again, red flag. So even before the news about selling their home, everybody knew Ben and her weren't exactly living together anymore. And that little tidbit of news was confirmed by so many sources and so many outlets. For starters, TMZ reported on May 16 that Ben was staying at a Brentwood home all by himself. I get wanting space to focus when you're on a job, and he is currently working on a movie, but the timing? A little sketch. Now that was confirmed by US Weekly later that same day. Then on May 19, an Entertainment Tonight source claimed they've been staying in separate homes and the tension has been high. The mother of two was seen house hunting in Beverly Hills without Ben, instead with some gal pals. And if you've been through a breakup, you know you need your friends for support. Because uh, I apparently he's just focusing on his work and his kids. So so he's moved out and they're gonna have to sell that home. Yeah, well, it's up for sale. Look, it's only been a year. Like, I get I've already said this, but it's just, ah. Talk about a house flip. So fans were very quick to point out, the pair have been spending a lot of time apart lately. They've been attending a lot of events without each other, other than stuff for the kids, which I get wanting to stay together for the kids. For starters, JLo was seen in a casual sporty look when she was showing up for rehearsal in LA. And I get it, he might not have accompanied her to rehearsal, but it was like, mm. Little weird. Okay, here's one thing. She was solo for her co chairing duties at the Met Gala, the big fashion event of the year. Everybody was shocked that Ben wasn't there. Now, yes, he was busy with work, but like, he appeared at the Rose of Tom Brady May 5th, the night before, which kind of cancels out the too busy for the Met Gala excuse that he was playing with. During one recent outing together, when the pair was out together, it was kind of strained. Neither of them were cracking a smile when they were grabbing lunch. They've also appeared tense during previous outings. Let's see, they went to St. Bart's. That was a heated discussion. Cameras caught them, they were fighting. Just months before that in September, which is last year folks, we're going pretty close here, Jennifer was seen looking very tense as she sat in the passenger seat of a car alongside Ben as they drove around LA. And they also raised eyebrows when they were seen attending the premiere of The Mother together. Now this was JLo's movie. So they were posing on the red carpet, you know, where everybody's going like, okay, picture, picture, smile, smile. Well, Jennifer had a frown on her face and she was gesturing towards Ben and he looked angry. Yes, there was a lip reader that did clarify that that it wasn't an argument, but it looked like one. So after they were snapped having their very tense conversation, they soon reverted to Hollywood mode. They had the big grins, they had the little kisses. It was just like, mm. So what did the lip reader confirm? Well, JLo asked Ben if her low cut top was showing too much. And he's like, no, it looks fine, honey, which ooh, doesn't sound cute. Now later when they got their posing and they were all cutesy, he was like, oh, don't worry, babe. And it's like, uh, okay, what are we worrying about? Now Jennifer seemingly responded by saying, Come 
close to me. Which like, if you've gotta guide yourselves together, not good. So JLo actually has a habit of being a bit of a diva, like a big one. Whereas Ben is not exactly a diva himself, which might be a cause for a split. You wanna know how big of a diva JLo's been? Once, she had somebody fired for being a fan. Now this was a maid in a hotel room. She was just cleaning, this was in Germany during JLo's 2012 world tour, and she was a big fan. Her name was Prey, by the way, and she tried to ask JLo for an autograph, and then two of JLo's assistants stopped her. Soon after, Prey was out of a job. Yeah, the cleaning company that employed her called her and said, Miss Lopez complained, and she was fired over the phone because of asking for an autograph. Now, JLo denied the claims with a tweet, being like, come on, thought you knew me better than this. Would never get anyone fired over an autograph. First I heard of this was on Twitter. Well, if that isn't enough to prove JLo's behavior, we've got more. There was an old interview from like ages ago, and she wasn't speaking too well about all of her colleagues in the industry. Now, for context, JLo is a multi-hyphenate. She's a dancer, she's a singer, she's an actress. Well, way back in the day, she had this to say about Gwyneth Paltrow. She was like, tell me what she's been in. I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. JLo even had stuff to say about Madonna, being like, do I think she's a great performer? Yeah. Do I think she's a great actress? No. Acting is what I do, so I'm hard to run people when they say, oh, I can do that. I can act. I'm like, honey, don't spit on my craft. Well, when JLo said this, she'd only done Selena and Anaconda in terms of acting roles, which like, not something to be bragging about. Personally, don't think she's a strong actress. According to a lot of JLo's former staff members, she's earned the nickname Halo because she paid her staff about 50% less than they could find elsewhere. And this has been going on for years. Um, if we're talking like 2003, back around the first time JLo was with Ben. So they had a big win and Ben was like, okay, here's a $2,000 tip to the dealer. But before the dealer could actually grab the reward, JLo snatched it up and dropped $200. And what's her reasoning for paying everybody so little? She's like, well, I had to work hard for my money, so should everybody else. Like, it's just so embarrassing. Like, if she had to work hard, shouldn't she try to make it easier for others since she knows how hard it is? Cause like, it just gets worse over the years. One more story on this. In 2012, reports surfaced that JLo demanded that staff working for her, don't make any eye contact with me. Don't speak to me. This was while she was having work done on her San Fernando Valley home. And she demanded that none of the helpers, none of the drivers, the contractors, anybody, nobody interact with her. And also when she's flying first class, don't bother her. Even if you're a flight attendant just trying to do your job. Apparently there was one time where a flight attendant offered her a drink and she just like did not acknowledge him. She said to her assistant, please tell him I'd like a Diet Coke and Lime. Which like, so rude. So her relationships have always been in the spotlight. She's been in like, I don't know, several high profile relationships that have made headlines. From 2004 to 2011, she was married to Mark Anthony. They had those twins. And then in 2017, she was with uh, former New York Yankee, Alex Rodriguez. Now here's where the diva control issues come into play. Apparently she would only consider consider marrying A-Rod if he agreed to a list of demands. So he couldn't talk to anybody under the age of 40, sorry, any woman under the age of 40, which gross. And also she wanted a guarantee that he won't let himself go once they get married. So we know that marriage didn't work out because she's now, well, maybe married to Ben, but what rules did he have to agree to to keep her happy? So Ben was actually recently spotted out on an outing with former wife, Jennifer Garner. They were seen earlier this week talking together. Jennifer Garner appeared relaxed and casual. So like, is he still pining for his ex? Or is he looking for advice on how to break things off with JLo? So with Ben and JLo constantly working on their own separate projects, time and distance can be making the heart grow colder instead of fonder. According to insiders, JLo was reportedly throwing herself into work, which has always been an outlet for her to stay busy and distracted. So yeah, she has been busy with a lot of press tours for Atlas and The Greatest Love Story. So it seems like she's coping with marital issues by focusing on her career. Ben feels like she has a hard time feeling satisfied. And that's one of the many issues they're facing. He's also one of the only people who feels comfortable enough to be honest and real with her. It's part of why she loves them, but also why she's upset with them. And finally for today, it seems like the duo are just regretting how rushed the marriage was. A lot of insiders have been nonstop dishing about what's been going on, and uh, one source from page six is a lot. So this was somebody connected to Ben, and they noted that if there was a way to divorce on grounds of temporary insanity, apparently he would. He feels like the last two years were a fever dream, and he's just come to his senses now and understands there is just no way this is going to work. Yikes. The greatest love story never told might be headed for disaster if the Benefer divorce rumors are to be trusted. Here is why Ben Affleck gave up on his marriage to Jennifer Lopez. Multiple sources close to the couple have told various celebrity news publications that JLo and Ben have very different views when it comes to keeping their private life private. JLo likes to engage with her fans, sharing behind the scenes videos and personal stories. Affleck appears to like the opposite. 
keeping personal matters personal. The public found out JLo violated Ben's trust in a big way back in February. While filming the documentary that was about JLo's movie, there was a moment in the doc where JLo had invited a bunch of musicians to come and view the love letters Ben had written to her. She did this because she hoped the letters would inspire the musicians. Turns out Ben had no idea she was going to do that. Many people were quick to point out how strange it was to share such personal items, especially since the person who wrote them had no idea it was happening. Ben did appear taken aback but acknowledged that if JLo was going to name the film The Greatest Love Story Never Told, maybe the letters about that love should be in it. In more recent appearances, JLo and Ben seem to be flying solo more than usual. Currently the two megastars are each working on separate projects. JLo was in New York for a while to film Kiss of a Spider Woman, as well as promote and walk some carpets for her upcoming film Atlas. Plus, she was co-chairing the Met Gala, she's a very busy woman. One would think though that her husband, Ben, would want to support his wife while she co-chaired the biggest fashion event of the year, but he was nowhere to be found. Maybe he wasn't invited, or he had other filming scheduling conflicts, or he wanted to wear a black suit but didn't want to get roasted for it, we will never know. Affleck has been filming a new movie, the sequel to his 2016 film The Accountant for the past couple months. It's likely he would have been filming right around Met Gala time. We know that Ben prefers to not be in the spotlight much, perhaps the actor just didn't want to step onto such a big carpet because he is not one to enjoy the attention the way Jennifer does. But JLo isn't the only one stepping out alone, Ben does have an appearance of his own where he flew solo. The night of the roast of Tom Brady, Affleck was in the audience, noticeably without Jennifer, which caused a lot of raised eyebrows. JLo isn't the only piece of the marriage Ben has been seen missing. Some have spotted the actor out, but missing one important piece of jewelry, his wedding ring. Affleck was seen not wearing his ring while on set for his new film, The Accountant 2. Multiple celebrity news publications reported he was seen stepping in his trailer without it. Now, there might be a very easy explanation as to why he wasn't wearing the ring on set. He could have just been filming. Likely, he can't wear his personal wedding ring in the film, so it makes sense he would take it off. People have just been keeping an eye on Affleck's hands ever since he stepped out without the ring, so yes, this has happened a few times. It's been alleged that Affleck has been trying to hide his ring finger when paparazzi are around. Then there was also that one time he allegedly didn't have it on while at a recital one of his children was in. Is there a possibility that his ring was getting clean? Of course, but fans are still skeptical of the situation. JLo seems to consistently be wearing hers. The couple have been spotted sharing tension-filled conversations in public multiple times. Maybe the Batman actor has had enough, especially if he is the type to value his privacy. The most public possible disagreement between the couple happened at the Grammys. The moment has been immortalized on the social media platform X by user Chicks in the Office. They posted a video of the moment with the caption, someone please check on Ben Affleck. The video, it's about 30 seconds long and it features host Trevor Noah sitting beside the couple. Trevor Noah was directly beside the couple and actively hosting the Grammys at the time the couple was having the disagreement in the clip. Maybe they didn't notice the cameras were on yet or something, maybe it was a bit. In the clip, you can see JLo speaking to Affleck in a way that looks like it could be a bit of a stern tone. As the camera gets closer, JLo lightly hits Affleck's chest before giving him a displeased look and turning away, looking frustrated. Affleck is also looking a bit frustrated himself for the remainder of the video. When JLo turns and realizes where the camera is, she starts laughing and smiling again. Ben offers little half smiles, but mainly keeps a straight face. This isn't the first or the last time the couple have been caught in a possible disagreement in a public setting. There is the infamous car video where JLo gets in the car and Ben appears to slam the door after. Then there was the maybe fight on the red carpet for JLo's 2023 movie The Mother. The point is, we've seen this before. It was a big press day when the news dropped that Ben allegedly said his marriage to Jennifer was a decision made of temporary insanity and that he is finally coming to his senses. Comments like that make it seem like the star is out of the honeymoon phase. A source close to Ben Affleck dropped this shocking confession. Speaking to Page Six about the famous couple's marriage, they said, if there was a way to divorce on grounds of temporary insanity, Ben would. He feels like the last two years were just a fever dream and he's come to his senses now and understands that there is just no way this is going to work. Since the shocking comments dropped a few weeks ago, more and more people have started watching the celebrity couple's every move, and more celebrity gossip lovers have tuned in for any catastrophic developments. For as long as Ben and JLo have been dating, there have been infidelity rumors. Fatch are unique and have people wondering if Affleck waking up from the self-proclaimed JLo fever dream has Affleck missing his ex, Jennifer Garner. Allegedly, he's been spending more time with his ex-wife, Jennifer, allegedly spending time at her house 
house. The pair do share three kids together that live at Garner's house, and it's been reported that Garner is up for a big role in an upcoming Affleck film, so there's a few reasons why the couple might be spending so much time together. Some sources have provided a different outlook on the reason why the former couple might be meeting up. Sources claim that Garner is encouraging Affleck to work through any problems in his marriage and is really rooting for them. JLo has shown some entitled behavior in the past few months, and Affleck might just be over it. At the Met Gala this year, JLo was caught on camera acting coldly towards a reporter. As she ascended the Met Gala steps, a reporter JLo was passing by asked her who she was wearing. With barely a glance to the side, the singer responded, Scaparelli. The clip was uploaded to TikTok, and pretty soon the comment section was full of people calling JLo out for the rude interaction. Then there was also the clip from her documentary that went viral. In it, we can see JLo talking with members of her team about her movie. A choreographer is needed, and JLo wants the best of the best, Derek Huff. Only he isn't available because he is in a wedding right around the time when JLo would need him. It came out later, when the clip was viral, that the wedding he was in was his own wedding. People were quick to call JLo out for acting entitled and appearing to push Derek to focus on her film when he should focus on his wedding. Later, Derek revealed that JLo actually changed her own schedule around to accommodate him and not the other way around. JLo's behavior towards those working in the service industry and her demands might have Affleck questioning his relationship. Multiple people have shared their encounters serving JLo in some way, and most stories share something in common. JLo is not fun. One former casino employee claimed in a video uploaded to TikTok that JLo would either encourage Affleck to leave smaller tips for employees, or if he still left something big, circle back later to exchange the tip for something smaller. In one particular instance of this, Affleck was present when it happened happened and allegedly looked mortified. JLo also allegedly has a rule that she does not want any female flight attendants on her flights. However, that is likely because her last husband cheated on her with a flight attendant. JLo's summer tour may have been causing strain on the couple's relationship, at least that's what some have gathered based on the statement released regarding the tour's cancellation. JLo just shocked many of her fans when she announced she was cancelling her This Is Me Now tour live. What makes the cancellation even more shocking is how close it happened to the official start date. It was supposed to start June 26 and carry out through the summer, with the singer visiting major cities throughout the US and Canada. It's shocking for an artist to cancel a tour like this so close to that start date. Typically by this point, many of the tour preparations would be in the final stages of completion, people would already be hired, so what happened? A source revealed to People that JLo is devastated to call off the shows. They further shared some details about JLo's personal life that might have led to the cancellation, saying, Life is a lot right now. As sad as she was to cancel the tour, she's also relieved. She needs to take care of herself. The decision was something that her team encouraged. Everyone is supportive of her focusing on family right now. An additional statement on the singer's website echoes this. The bit about focusing on her family life is what celebrity gossip lovers have focused on, many wondering what this might be implying about her relationship with Ben. Was the singer focusing too much on the show or spending too much time in rehearsals? It's a shame the tour had to be cancelled, especially since JLo seemed so excited about it and was even making plans to bring her children along for the July portion. JLo did release her own statement about the situation on her website, writing, I am completely heartsick and devastated about letting you down. Please know that I wouldn't do this if I I didn't feel it was absolutely necessary. I promise you I will make it up to you and we will all be together again. I love you all so much, until next time. Rumors have been circulating for the past few weeks that Affleck has moved out of his and JLo's home and into a rental. Is the Batman star tired of living with his wife? The rental mansion in question is reported to be incredibly expensive at $100,000 a month, but that might be nothing to the actor though, with his net worth reported to be somewhere around $150 million. The house, it's massive at 10,000 square feet. Though the price tag might seem steep, apparently the house really used to be rented at 300,000 a month, so Ben is actually getting a deal here. Rumors have been surrounding this house and the actor for weeks now. Allegedly, the home in question is very close to where his children would be, which means it's very close to his ex, Jennifer Garner's house. Garner allegedly visits Ben at the home. Pops waiting outside the house once caught a couple snaps of her. More recently, it seems JLo has visited the home, but didn't stay long. The Daily Mail reported 
that the couple attended Ben's daughter's graduation party and afterward drove off together to Ben's rental. However, allegedly JLo didn't stick around once they got there, getting out of one car and then swiftly in another and driving away. A move that has definitely caused confusion for outside observers. Since this moment, it's come out that though the couple wore big smiles in the photos going into and out of the event, inside they were a bit cold to each other. Are Benifer on the rocks again? Looking over the recent news that's come out about the couple, I feel like Ben might be getting cold feet. But don't just take my word for it. Take the mountain of evidence I found. So for starters, JLo is pressuring him to do things. Now sure, to a lot of folks it might be clear that JLo and Ben Affleck are blended family goals with their ex-spouses. They ensure their five children feel close and safe with everyone in their large family, and it seems like they're kind of antsy about welcoming another member into the family. Yeah, reportedly, they want another child together. Now while JLo has repeated the sentiment for quite some time, soon after she and Ben got back together, insiders claimed that uh, she's got baby fever, and she's talking about it non-stop. A source recently told Life & Style via Yahoo that she's been trying to convince Ben to welcome another baby via surrogacy, and recently she finally got him to cave in. Apparently, according to our source, she nagged him until he went along with it. Ben was completely happy with the blended family they already have, but he loves kids. That's why he agreed to having another. At the end of the day, he wants Jennifer to be happy. Ooh, that doesn't sound like a healthy situation. A baby isn't just an accessory, it's a commitment, and definitely not something you should be nagged into doing. Also, he wants a more low-key life. Like, all in all, Ben Affleck tends to be a more low-key person compared to JLo, minus them both working in the public eye. So, JLo recently launched her new album, This Is Me, Now, with a self-financed $20 million multimedia campaign. Then she made the experimental film, This Is Me Now, A Love Story. We get it. This was about the rekindling of her romance with Ben. And then there was the Amazon Prime documentary, The Greatest Love Story Never Told, about, yep, the making of the record and the film. So when Ben pops up in the documentary, it's often to express concern that his private love story is becoming used for something he didn't particularly want. So this entire thing is actually named after a scrapbook that he gifted Jennifer for Christmas in 2021, stacked with every letter and email they'd written to each other over the last 20 years. which. Is something that should probably be private. Jennifer showed the book to her producers and songwriters on the first day of making her new album without asking or telling Ben. She's like, it kind of became like our Bible. We just left it there in the studio. Which, this revelation comes out within the first five minutes of the documentary, and right out of the gate, Ben isn't shy about his discomfort. He's absolutely shocked that Jennifer would share something so personal with her collaborators, and now, of course, with the world. I get it, art comes from making something personal, but when you're making someone intentionally uncomfortable with your art and kind of violating consent, that's not a good move. Now, yes, if you look back, Back at the history, JLo's relationships have always been in the spotlight. She's been in more than several high profile relationships that have made headlines all over the world. So Ben should know what he was getting back into. For example, from 2004 to 2011, she was married to Mark Anthony. They had twins. And then in 2017, she made headlines again when she was dating former New York Yankee Alex Rodriguez. Now, rumors spread that she was only going to consider marrying him if he agreed to the like crazy list of demands. Reportedly, he wasn't allowed to talk to any woman under the age of 40, which is super controlling. Gross. Also, JLo loved his physique and wanted to guarantee guarantee that he wouldn't let himself go once they got married? Now sure, none of these rumors have been confirmed, but like, it's just a little extreme. Now yes, we know Jen and A-Rod didn't work out, because she's now married to Ben, but I'm wondering, what did he have to agree to to make her happy? We already know she nagged him into possible surrogacy. What else? J-Lo at the end of the day has a reputation of being a bit of a diva. Okay, a big diva. Whereas I don't think I've ever heard about Ben making crazy demands for press tours or similar situations. Like, once upon a time, J-Lo had somebody fired for being a fan, so there was this maid who happened to be cleaning her room in Germany during her 2012 world tour. And as a big fan of JLo, she tried to ask the star for an autograph, only to have not one, but two of JLo's assistants stop her. And soon after, she was out of a job, and she knew why. Literally a day later, the cleaning company that employed her at the hotel called and said that JLo complained, and she was fired over the phone because of asking for an autograph. Now, look, I get it, it's not the most professional thing in the world, but don't get somebody fired over it. Now, on the flip side, JLo herself denied the claims with one single tweet, saying, come on, Thought you knew me better than this. Would never get anyone fired over an autograph. First I heard about this was on Twitter. Okay, sure, there's plenty of speculation there, but mm, let's try something else. An old interview from JLo herself resurfaced recently, and she wasn't speaking too well about her fellow colleagues in the industry. So this is what she had to say about two major stars at the time. Gwyneth Paltrow, she was like, tell me what she's been in. I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. She also had stuff to say about Madonna. Do I think she's a great performer? Yeah. Do I think she's a great actress? No. Acting is what I do, so I'm harder on people when they say, oh, I can do that, I can act, and I'm like, hey, don't spit on my craft. The funny thing is that this is what Jennifer 
percent after only having like Selena and Anaconda under her belt for her career. So that's kind of embarrassing, and I'm glad people are calling her out for this behavior. Now, if we want to talk more about like close circle stuff, according to several of JLo's former staff members, she earned herself the nickname Paylo because she paid her staff around 50% less than they can make elsewhere. Now, this rumor's been going on for years. Let's go way back to like 2003. So, yes, you guessed it. Back when she was first with Ben Affleck, they were spotted in Vegas together. They had a big win, and Ben decided to drop a 2,000 tip to the dealer. But before he could, you know, tip the generous reward, JLo snatched up the cash and swapped it for 200. So, does JLo have a reason for paying her staff so little? She's like, I had to work hard to earn my money. So should everybody else. Yeah, that's embarrassing for her. If she had to work hard to earn her money, shouldn't she try to make it easier for others since she knows how hard it is? She just seems so entitled and that's just gross. Don't worry, we got more. Um, let's go back one year from that. 2002, she's starring in the romantic comedy Made in Manhattan. She's traveling all over the world promoting this romantic comedy. It's amazing, it's great, it's wonderful. And when she landed in London, she had people talking nonstop about her demands. But promoting the movie, she had a very interesting encounter with hotel staff. So she stayed at the Metropolitan Hotel, and uh, that's where we started seeing the signs of her being a major diva. The hotel staff was kind of astounded by her lavish and extravagant demands because it reached new levels for them. Apparently she requested that the hotel staff had to provide her with thousands of pounds of lemon scented candles. Also like she needed limousines to escort her only like 200 yards away because couldn't do anything, had to travel in style, can't walk on the sidewalk. Let's go back more to, well, Sort of present day, in 2012 reports surfaced that uh, Jenny from the block demanded staff working for her. Don't make eye contact with me, don't talk to me. While having work done on her San Fernando Valley home, she demanded that none of the helpers, drivers, or contractors have any interactions with her. Yes, I know, these rumors were never confirmed, but still. And reportedly when flying first class, yeah, don't bother her. Not even if you're a flight attendant. One time a flight attendant offered her a drink, cause that's her job, and she refused to acknowledge him. She said to her assistant, please tell him I'd like a Diet Coke and Lime. Once again, I know, these rumors have not been confirmed, but like, when the evidence is piling up, you really gotta think about it. Seems like she doesn't appreciate the help she gets. So, on again, off again relationships have a bit of a bad track record. Yes, I know, the Ben reunion was the big headline of 2021, and now, yes, they are a happily settled married couple. It only took them 20 years and two engagements to get there. For talking history speaking, their first round began in 2002. That's when they started a rom-com together. It was cute. Ben proposed, but then they broke things off in 2004. Since then, they went on, they married other people, they had kids, they got divorced, and then they dated other people again. And then, oh you know, a month after she ended things with A-Rod, welcome back. I think this is May of 2021. They got married in summer 2022, and while this is cute and all, once again, on again and off again relationships have a bad track record. What? to stop this couple from calling it off again, especially when you look at everything else we've talked about today. And finally, look, I know, I've already mentioned the documentary today, the This Is Me Now, the love story, but um, some fans who watched it afterwards had to take to social media to call out Jen for her lies. Yeah. Now we're not saying the love story is fake, that's true. But in one scene, JLo poses in the mirror of her personal gym as she shakes out her hair and reminisces about her childhood in the Bronx. She said, I like taking my hair like this. It reminds me like when I was 16 in the Bronx, running up and down the block, crazy little girl who used to be effing wild and no limits, all dreams. However, TikTok user Photos by Angela slammed the star in a series of videos as she claimed to have gone to the same Catholic high school as JLo and accused her of lying about her experience living in the Bronx. She said, we both attended an all girls high school in an Irish and Italian neighborhood. So you weren't running up and down the block. And this isn't the only lie. JLo has long been accused of not actually singing on her albums, and singer Natasha Ramos actually took to TikTok to shed light on the rumor. Now Natasha, who has a voice very similar to JLo's, was hired to sing the demo of Jenny from the Block. And the production team liked her voice so much that they asked her to record five more songs for the album. This is me, this is me then, yeah. What do you know? Natasha received $3,500 and a backup singer's credit. But as she claimed, and as the original demo demonstrates, it is her voice that appears in the final track. And not only in the choruses, it's also her laugh and her yelling from the Bronx. Lopez only sings in the verse. So when you add up all these lies, I can see why Ben might be having some second thoughts.